Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Radiant Lawcast. My name is Senna and I'm your host, as always. Uh, joining me today is my brilliant colleague, Chrissy. Chrissy, how are you doing? Very well, Senna. How are you? Good. 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 Welcome to the Lawcast. Thank you. I'm excited. I'm excited too. Yeah, because I feel like I, I, I feel like I sent, so I sent Chrissy like an invite a while back and I'm like, yeah, you're going to be on the Lawcast and then life and then <laughs> scheduling and all these things. But finally... We're making it happen. You're here. Welcome to Thank the thing. Appreciate it. Um, before we go into what I want to chat to you about, which is um, just managing client relationships and, and all of that stuff, to chat about you, um, your legal journey so far, your journey before Radiant and at Radiant, what it's been like. We don't have to start from, you know, I, I was born in 19, whatever, or whatever, 2000 or something. I don't know. Um, but let's just chat about that and, and you know, your journey so far. Um, so yeah, I started out as most lawyers do, you know, university hustle for that law degree, yeah. go into the traditional law firm setting. Sleepless nights. Sleepless nights. Yeah. Living in six minute increments, paginating and paper cuts. Surviving on energy drinks. Surviving on energy <laughs> drinks, looking for court <laughs> files, you know, the regular run around. Um, I did that for a while, got admitted, uh, was in practice for two and a half years okay. uh, before coming uh, to Radiant. It, yeah, so I had been kind of putting my feelers out for yeah. a career paths that weren't necessarily those kind of predetermined stepping stones from yeah. being in a traditional law firm. Okay. And one night I just decided to try this company, Radiant <laughs> Art. Tried it out, sent my CV at, I don't know, some time in the evening. At odd hours. At odd hours. <laughs> And Nicola responded um, quite, yeah, quite shortly after that. And I got chatting um, and I felt like Radiant was, it was fresh. It was new. The mm -hmm. concept of kind of being able to take your, your legal theory into a space where you can be creative and apply it in ways that aren't really uh, practiced on mm -hmm. the ground in the ordinary or traditional sense. Okay. Yeah. So... That's how I found myself here. Yeah. Awesome. And do you have like a creative sort of background, you know, because I am i don't have a creative bone in my body. It was either going to be a lawyer or an accountant or like an IT person between the, like none of that stuff shouts creative, right? It's, it's very standard almost, or you know, it's a very like traditional sort of approach to life in general. Do you kind of have like a background where you intended to do something beyond law or was law always what it was going to be? So um, when I initially applied to university, I had quite a keen interest in drama and theater and, uh, and yeah, I ended up going into humanities. Um, I did my- the other side of the world. <laughs> other side of the world, other side of campus. Um, so I did my undergrad in uh, English, literature, linguistics, all of those nice wordy kind of subjects. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, I wasn't too certain about uh, following a career in- uh, in drama, you know, it's kind of out there. And you know, as POCs, our parents, hey? Yeah. Our parents are like doctor, <laughs> lawyer, one of the two, go for it. Um, um, so, yeah, so I I, I did yeah. my creative thing in humanities, played around, had some fun there, um, and then moved on to law, which okay. I, I don't regret at all. Nothing against my parents, but I can't imagine as a person of color, I go to my parents, yo, hi guys, so listen, I want to do a career in music or drama. And then I'm trying to sell that. And it's not because you can't make money from those careers. You can, but just selling it to them instead of saying, no, go to law school and you do all this, you know? Um, so I get where you're coming from Absolutely. with that. I get where you're coming from. Um, so let's get into it. Um, then you joined Radiant. Um, uh, I'm trying to best describe kind of the role ever since you joined um but maybe you can take it from there and the way of working and all of that so let's chat about it um what's been your experience so far um so i i got to radiant i didn't know what to expect going into <laughs> radiant yeah. i got there and i like, remember you joined just before our year end function yes so it's like okay hi everyone i just joined. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> Um, so I just joined and as I joined, um, I got the news that I was going to be kind of shipped off to <laughs> one of, of, of uh, Radiant's bigger clients. 
Of course, it was um, somewhat intimidating because I thought I'd just take the regular route and be kind of introduced to the company and start working with my colleagues on the ground and just be part of the day to day doings yeah. initially. But um, I'm really grateful that uh, yeah, my <laughs> senior colleagues had the confidence in me to put me yeah. in, um, in, yeah. in in one of their bigger clients' space. Yeah. Um, so I came into Radiant. Uh, got sent off on secondment. So basically, yeah. secondment is where you're taken out of your primary role at the company that you're primarily employed at and put into a different organization for a certain period of of time. Yeah. Um, in that organization, uh, I'm essentially what is in-house counsel. Yeah. Um, or in-house legal advisor. <laughs> uh, you know, at Radiant, we're not really big on titles. Yeah, we're not really. It's yeah. Like you do what you do. Absolutely. But then some people like titles, so then we have to like put a title on something. You just have to kind of please everybody. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the beauty of also not having a title is that it, it leaves you with so much scope to apply uh, all of your skills in different ways and you, without without boxing it in any and, certain way. Yeah, um, you, there's a bit of freedom. You're not restricted to you are this and you do that. And, Absolutely. You know, you can grow better, I feel, if you know, kind of your title is not aligned to a particular function. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So, so, yeah. So I've been taken out of uh, the Radiant space and placed into a, a different organization. Mm -hmm. um, and in that, it's been a great learning experience. Yeah. Um, you basically, you serve an in-house role as if you were part of that organization's yeah. employ employee Employ base. Yeah. Um, you have to kind of learn their ways, learn their structures and deliver according to their standards while mm. at the same time upholding the objectives and the mindset coming from your um primary organization yeah. cuz ultimately they know that you're from radiant you're radiant employee as on you know as as the genesis right that's that's the first sort of thing but you still have to learn how they do everything exactly so um as as you've mentioned before kind of radiant's um main sort of objective is knowing your client yes. and delivering in a yes. way that uh gives value to your client's yes. business so you kind of have to always keep that in the back of your mind yeah. but also um be flexible enough to fit into the yeah. mold that your client work and the framework in which your client works okay. um so that's been interesting uh the content of course coming from my commercial legal um traditional uh, commercial commercial background is kind of very different okay but um you learn that your skills that you learn at your law firm in in the traditional sense in traditional mm -hmm. practice is so transferable and what's more important than the theoretical skills is your soft skills mm -hmm. and the analytical skills mm -hmm. that you have and how you can apply that um to different ways of working mm. um and, you know i i work a lot in managed legal services and you no, know, people always ask me what we do, and and sometimes I struggle with the wording. Sometimes I struggle with the vocab. Uh, we are a law firm. What I feel like we do differently is, you know, we're not external in that sense. So it's not like you send um, instructions to the lawyer. The lawyer then comes back and says X, Y, Z. This is how much I'll charge you. You know, we're we annex ourselves to the client's business. I think that's the best way to describe it. But we annex ourselves to the client's business, and we become essentially their sort of legal department right it's different when one person goes to fulfill that function or to do it more extensively to a point where they you know within the client business and you, you're doing you know that i always say i always i want to say it's like a renter lawyer i'm not sure if i can actually say that if not <laughs> then we cut it out um but i always describe it like a rental lawyer type relationship where it's like okay you go there and you're within you're immersed on a day-to-day -day basis now, from um, a learning point of view, do you feel like, you know, you, you learned more about practice in general from just being, because I take a lot of benefit from being across multiple sort of streams and different clients and whatever. But when you go into one and you're supporting sort of that one, do you feel like there's, there's still that scope to learn more stuff? Absolutely. So being in one organization, you also realize that organizations are multifaceted. Okay. So you get to touch on a wide range of um, of legal topics, mm -hmm. topics that you wouldn't even think that you'd be involved in. Yes. Um, 
which of course is not what you planned to necessarily do. You, you know, you kind of go into Radiant and, and you yeah. think of it of being a contract mm-hmm. um, centric uh, <laughs> way of, of doing law, but it's yeah. way beyond that. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's been, it's been a wonderful journey getting to learn um, and getting to kind of, discover okay. ways in which law can be applied in in scenarios that you wouldn't even think you it would become necessary think. okay um we work in the marketing scope of things uh you work in kind of cross border transactions mm. okay. and it's just extremely um it's not kind of grouped it's just it's very vast and mm-hmm. every day you can get a different topic mm-hmm. and it forces you to kind of hone in uh perfect a certain area and mm-hmm. before you know it, you have this bank of legal knowledge. Um, it's almost like just having knowing <laughs> legal trivia that's yeah. just beyond what you would have touched on and had you been, um, yeah, had you been in the okay. in the traditional uh, legal space. Okay. okay, and that's that's your experience. Now let's. I just wanted to go into the client relationship side of things because I, I always feel that's very important because I think that the main reason why we do it is to best support our clients, right? How do you find, or what do you think is the best way of managing a relationship with clients? And by managing it, I mean, ensuring that, because you will always hear, if the client's not happy, then, you know, we're not really doing a good job. Um, how have you found is the best way to approach managing a client relationship and ensuring that clients are happy and, you know, all of that stuff? So I think it's important to remember that you're stepping into their space, into okay. their house. Yeah. Um, you need to learn to, well, you need to learn their business. You need to learn their way of working. Once you learn the system and kind of um, place yourself in, in the space of one of their br- regular employees, mm-hmm. I think uh, you're able to take a step back and see where their strengths lie, where there's deficiencies, where there's lacunas and so forth. And mm-hmm. in that, um, I think it's necessary for you to uh, be open and g- build good relationships uh, mm-hmm. by communicating and being honest about yeah. what you've identified, um, you know, where, you, where you think they're doing well, where you think they could be doing better, better. where you think you could support them mm-hmm. in, um, in kind of bridging those, those, those gaps uh, mm-hmm. where y- you see that obviously you can bring yeah. value to, um, to the way that they work. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's been really instrumental in uh, in that initial uh, getting to know the business yeah. and and integrating into that space of uh, coming from coming from an outside company in, into a different in, organization. Yeah, outside coming in, you don't feel like oh maybe I'm the outside person. Do you proper feel like you're inside when you're in Conman, or do you always feel like oh, I'm, I'm arms Um, you uh, well for me personally, I do feel like I'm part okay. part of the team um everyone's been very great in welcoming me but sometimes you do kind of have to just have a bit of confidence um in, in personality <laughs> socially as yeah. well as intellectually and just be like this is my view and mm-hmm. this is what i can bring what i think yeah and yeah. i think from there they kind of realize okay you can roll with it let's uh <laughs> let's get going and yeah. you kind of become integrated into the team so quickly and if they know that if they see that they can rely on you and your support is of value, um, yeah, the, I, I think that establishes a, a good foundation for okay. for a, a client a client relationship. A client in that relationship. Okay. Um, so many people have different sort of theories as to you know how do we make sure that we have a bond with our clients. Some of, some things we do is we schedule calls, um, get to know you, um, type of things, setups. Uh, before COVID, a lot of companies would host events, workshops, you know, invite people for a glass of wine and cheese and biltong and all these things. Mm. And it was, and that ensured that we maintain a friendship. What, what I found is, you know, cause, cause we try to be in-house counsel. So we try to be part of the team and we try to be, to foster those sort of positive relationships and we're not, not that they are hiring us, but. Yeah, you know, they are, but then we're still, you know, part of your team. What I found is with, with COVID has become difficult because barely ever met a lot of these people, right? And and that's something that to, that we're, we're not that struggling with, but I, I 
feel like it can lead to sort of impersonal relationships. And that's what I've always, I've always felt like, okay, well, if we do, if you do what we do and what we do is, you know, manage legal services in some instance, we help with projects and all these things. How do we prevent it from becoming an impersonal relationship? Because that's important in the manner in which we work. And you touched on that, you know, you, you feel like you're confident in your views and you get that across. I'm, I'm trying to, I don't know. I'm very conscious always of, oh, I'm not, I don't want this to feel like, I'm just an outside person. I want you to feel like you. I'm within. It might be easy on secondment, but how would you suggest it to someone who's maybe in my position, who's not within the client environment, but is providing that service from here yeah, where I am at Radium? Absolutely. So um, I think it's important to remember not only to be client-centric, but heart-centric as well. Heart-centric. Yes. Yeah, so your organizations are filled with people. Mm -hmm. um, employees are still people. They still yes. have hearts. They yes. still need to feel like they belong. They still need to feel cared about. Mm -hmm. um, so you kind of have to go in with the understanding that you're still speaking to a person. You have to ask them how they're doing, kind of establish yeah. a rapport. Remember little details that they've mentioned previously. Um, How's your dog? Exactly. <laughs> how was your holiday? How was your half day trip to, I don't know, the countryside? Yes. You know, remember those little details, ask mm -hmm. and show that you care at least. Um, so I found that also you need to, with COVID, as you've said, everything has become kind of virtual. Most mm -hmm. relationships have become virtual as well as with us working remotely and yes. me working remotely with the client that's so far um, from where but you have a double whammy. You've got remote with your actual colleagues and then remote with a client as well. Exactly. So like... Remote remoteness. <laughs> um, so your interactions are virtual. We're speaking mm -hmm. on Teams. We're speaking on Slack. We're mm -hmm. speaking via email. Mm -hmm. um, you, your tone is also very important. Um, you, it needs to be kind of, you need to know your aud audience. Mm -hmm. Remember that your audience is human yeah. and approach uh, co correspondence and communication from that yes. uh, point of view as well. And also with going into Radiant, Radiant has quite a uh, intense onboarding program. <laughs> and one, I of heard the, about that. <laughs> one of the um, uh, aspects of that onboarding program that stood out for me was um, they give you a practice email from a client yes. where the client is being quite pushy and you need to respond in yeah. a way that honors and respects um, the way in which Radiant works, which is in, in, this, yes. in the slot um, framework, mm -hmm. as well as provide your client some comfort. Mm -hmm. um, so it teaches you to become the client. So sit <laughs> yes. in the space of the client. What yeah. does the client want to feel? What mm -hmm. does the client what does the client want as a reaction from this sort of email? So more of the softer skills. It's absolutely more of the softer skills. So that teaches you to respond to your audience, see yeah. your audience as being human. Mm -hmm. And I think understanding that um, point of departure is very important in maintaining relationships um, mm. virtually with your employees and also just communicating with them mm -hmm. in a way that shows, um, I understand that we're still human. I understand that this is work, but I want us to have a a friendly understanding and relationship and be able to take it, um, you know, beyond just the work sort of level. You need to be able to come to me to let me know that you're feeling stressed. Let me know how I can <laughs> deliver my work in such a yes. way that it gives you relief, you know, so yeah. that I know um, that I can provide support where you really need it the one thing our profession has been accused by doing of clients, right? So clients often feel like lawyers flex on them. Um, and by flex, I mean they flex their legal knowledge, right? So I'm going to use the biggest words I can. I'm going to describe this in, so when I quote something, right, in the contract, like it'll be prudent for us to proceed in this mm -hmm. way, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> so then you're, you're a client reading that and you go, okay, it, it might make you feel small, Mm. Whereas if I'm saying, oh, no, you know, I actually think maybe the best way to take this on or the best way to deal with this, when you speak in you know, a softer sort of tone with an, an easier language, more informal, it can make a client feel like, okay, this guy's not talking down at me. You yes. know, he's, he's part of my team, he's on my side. He's not part of my team because he knows better and he's just, you know, yeah. brilliant or a nerd or a geek or whatever. But if, if, 
he's part of my team and he genuinely cares. You know, where where it's like, you know, in this regard, uh, inter alia, all these big words that we like using in emails and in letters and in contracts, it can feel very impersonal. Like, okay, maybe I shouldn't approach this guy about how my day is going. Um, even our follow-up emails, you know, clients have their businesses, they take time, they're very intelligent. You know, there's there's a whole lot of things which they know that we don't know. I mean, if an engineer starts talking about, I don't know, making a lift or making a car, I would not be able to advise him on that. Even if he gets very technical, I'd be like, yo, okay, cool, you know? Um, but one of, one of the difficulties at the legal profession is then when when it comes to us, we always want to show how much we know. And, you know, it makes it difficult for someone to say, Listen, I'm feeling stressed today, my dog died, that's why I didn't reply to your email. Then when we follow up, we say, kindly note that the deadline from the other side is on this day. It would be prudent for us to get back to them at this point as soon as possible. Please let me know when you're available. You know, that's very impersonal. Absolutely. It doesn't create a relationship. It doesn't build a relationship. In fact, it might make someone feel, oh, oh my gosh, this lawyer and his email. Let me just respond. Whereas, you know, if you're friendlier in tone, could make you feel better, make the client feel better, sorry. And make them feel as though they can be honest with you. Yes. Nobody kind of has to uh, take <laughs> angles and cover up things. You know, mm -hmm. um, I think that makes the working relationship so much easier. If everyone can just be honest about where they're at, uh, what mm -hmm. they're struggling. And if we can just, as lawyers, yes. um, go into the situation <laughs> not thinking that we're all knowing a yeah. lot of the times um being a lawyer comes with a uh, underlying ego oh, and i think course. it's very important to be able to recognize that you're allowing your ego to lawyer instead of your your <laughs> kind of legal knowledge to yeah, and, it does to, um to lawyer after i graduated i put llb after my surname on my emails people have to know <laughs> like hey i'm here absolutely, i've arrived absolutely absolutely <laughs> Um, but I think the further along in your in your legal journey you get, you realize that titles are just the last bit that really counts. Yeah, I, I don't have LLB on my emails anymore, guys. Oh. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, the label kind of goes out on the wayside mm -hmm. um, when you realize what's really important, which is uh, delivering um, yeah, quality. providing we're providing support. Ultimately, support. the client needs a legal leg leg to stand on. Right, that's what we're here to do. We're not here to, you know, be that lawyer strutting about. That's we, we look like we're providing support. We're doing work for them, but we kind of maybe need to approach the way we work with clients in a more relaxed manner. Absolutely, and relaxed doesn't mean relaxed in the quality. That, no, no, no. That you Quality provide still got to be great. Absolutely. Don't get me so wrong. it's a very delicate balance between um, kind of upholding that expected lawyer quality yes. while at the same time coming back to your humanness and being like, look, I'm also a person. What are you struggling with? Let yes. me help you. Yeah. You don't understand that. You might, a lot of people don't want to approach lawyers because they think, oh, this is a stupid question. They're going to judge me but so yes, hard. I get, I get a lot of emails that actually start with, hi, Senna, this might be a stupid question. I'm like, mm, just ask it. You know, you're not supposed to know. No one expects you as a client to know anything about, I don't know, data protection or whatever it is that yeah. you need help with, right? Yeah. We're here to provide the support where maybe your knowledge is somewhat not there or it's missing or there are gaps. You know your things. Absolutely. Cool. Focus on what you know. Focus yeah. on what you know. I'm here for the legal stuff and the fine print. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. I okay. Cool, cool. And we spoke about you being on secondment uh, and the term that you used earlier was shipped off, which was something that I put in the notes <laughs> <laughs> because that's how I saw it. Right. Um, have you found it difficult to sort of maintain that team relationship with us whilst also providing the support that you currently do to the clients? Have you found that like as a difficulty in the sense that maybe me and you wouldn't work together on a day-to-day -day basis, right? I'm mm -hmm. sure in terms of work, I don't think we've had anything at all. This will probably be the first time we're working together. But do you feel like it, it's, 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 is it a struggle in a sense to maintain that camaraderie within the team whilst you're, you know, deeply, deeply within client work? 
So I'll first start off by saying shipped off is not necessarily a negative term. No, no, I know. Um, okay. <laughs> I mean, it means that you're probably a precious cargo and you're worthwhile being shipped. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. We'll go with precious cargo. Precious cargo. <laughs> um, but in terms of maintaining that camaraderie, um, I'd say that I don't feel estranged from the team. Um, yeah. I'm still involved with the social aspects yes. as well as the um, radiant internal team that works with the organization. Okay. Um, I, don't, I, I can go to them with questions. I can go to them with updates. The team is super responsive. Um, mm -hmm. They're super approachable yes. and they've been so welcoming of me. So I can't say that I feel like I'm not yes. part of the team. Um, uh, Radiance uh, management is also, uh, they see employees as stakeholders more than just of course. numbers, of course. which is just absolutely so appreciated in the, in this world of work or the mm -hmm. space that we're in. Um, they take, employee engagement mm -hmm. and continuous improvement very, very seriously. seriously. Um, they're obsessed with continuous <laughs> improvement and employee engagement. I must say that in my career so far, and I've mentioned this to Alex previously as well, yeah. um, we did an employee, oh, we've done so many employee engagement so questionnaires, question, yeah, yeah. but not once in my legal career has as a, a member of XCOM um, responded to me on that engagement. So I had a, a interaction where um, Alex oh, yeah. actually came back to me and I was like, huh, what? <laughs> you actually read this stuff? Um, uh, and they take it, uh, they take it seriously. Take so it to they, heart. Yeah. If you, I mean, if you take customer feedback um, so seriously, why wouldn't you take employee, employee feedback? feedback? And at right, the end of the important. day, it's your employees serving your customers. Yeah. Um, so just having that sort of engagement was yeah. was like, yeah, okay, cool. This I is had the same sort of experience, except um, it was also a little after I joined and then we had the engagement survey and I came back and I said uh, what I said. Like, oh, hey, you want to chat about what you said? I'm like, whoa, okay, cool. <laughs> right? I don't want to <laughs> chat about what I said. <laughs> But it wasn't anything negative. It was literally just feedback. And I had a question where I needed clarity. And then, you know, they took the time to say, no, this is actually how we're approaching this and why we're doing this. And then I took that. I really appreciated it. Absolutely. Um, made life easier. So probably as, you know, what, what a lot of firms and environments don't get is it's always all oh, the customers always right. The clients always right. True. You know, the, we want the client to be happy. But it's also important for the people supporting the client to also be happy. Um, definitely. Uh, and I think Radiant does it well. And the way that they've managed sort of uh, employees working across borders, working across time zones, um, working remotely, it's, it's, it just shows how sort of flexible and, and open to adapting uh, Radiant is. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the one thing that is always mentioned is that the only constant is change. Of course. And one thing that Radiant does is, is roll with change. Oh, of course. Really of well. Course. Very open to experimenting, um, seeing how we can make our work relationships work better, mm -hmm. how our outputs can be improved by our mm -hmm. internal work relationships and how we can kind of um, put our brains together to see how we can work better, work yeah. smarter together. Smarter together. Um, yeah, so awesome. in terms of feeling part of the team, I, I within. feel within, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> um, and then obviously, lastly, just to wrap up, um, we, we do have, you know, get a lot of people that are always asking us about, you know, what's the work environment like, what's all these things. And I, I try not to go into too many specifics. I just, you know, just watch the law cost. You get a feel of our personality. And then, you know, if you're interested, send through your, your CV and, 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 and all these things. But for someone who's keen to join, maybe they also, you know, want to go down the path you're going on or however, or they just want to be part of our team. What, what would you say to them about our manner of working, our work environment, the relationship? What, what would you say, what advice would you give to them? Coming into Radiant, I think you need to have an open mind. Mm -hmm. um, you need to come as an individual with your individual qualities. Mm -hmm. um, I think Radiant really appreciates um, a seasoned individual, someone that's yeah. not going to just uh, follow the course or be yeah. a sheep. Like just don't be salt. 
be salt and pepper. Or exactly. Paprika. Or, exactly. Or something. Yeah, be paprika <laughs> like that. <laughs> um, so in saying that, I think you need to come in with your personality, but also be able to fit into a team that is constantly mm-hmm. evolving, constantly changing. Um, Radi- as I also said, Radiant is uh, very technologically advanced as well. Mm-hmm. They um, are always looking for new ways to use tech to improve the workflow systems yes. and improve the way we uh, we we work in, in terms of speed, in terms of quality, in just any way possible. Yeah. Um, from the traditional law firm perspective, um, AI is looked at as a threat you know, taking jobs away from yeah. people. But at Radiant, we always look at how we can use technology to improve our systems, improve the way we work, improve mm. the way we engage. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Radiant's obsessed with continuous improvement. <laughs> continuous improvement. So you need to, you kind of need to not be happy with the status quo and always mm-hmm. look at um, how can I, you know, bring my my skill set, my, um, my personality into the space and how am I able to use that to support and improve the mm-hmm. Radiant business? Or you could come back from one weekend and your colleague says, oh, we got to do a video for the Lawcast as part of client outreach and marketing and making us look cool. Um, Absolutely. And you just have to say yes. You don't have a choice. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so you need to have a yes attitude all the way through. I think that will carry you through anything in life, though. Of um, course. Yeah. Chrissy, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Senna. Appreciate it lovely having you here it was a great catch up yes um everyone thank you so much for watching the video uh check out our website our linkedin for opportunities those who are looking at opportunities we've got a twitter account and yeah check you next time bye bye